Hello everyone. Welcome back to the series of lectures in pulmonology. Today we will be discussing about cystic fibrosis. So let's begin. So what exactly is this cystic fibrosis? We all know that cystic fibrosis is an inherited disorder. Right? So it is an inherited disorder. So this is inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion. So this is inherited in an autosomal recessive fashion. And this is an autosomal recessive exocrinopathy. That means what? It predominantly involves the exocrine glands. It predominantly involves the exocrine glands. So the exocrine glands are the one which are involved like your pancreas. Okay. So this is an autosomal recessive exocrinopathy. So what is the gene that is involved in your cystic fibrosis? The gene name is CFTR gene which is cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene okay so cystic fibrosis transmembrane conductance regulator gene the cftr gene is the gene that is affected in your cystic fibrosis so what is the function of this gene Right? So, the function of this, this gene is that it helps in maintaining of the ion channel. It helps in maintaining of the ion channel on the apical membrane, on the apical surface of the lumen. Okay? And it increases the chloride ion concentration, increases the chloride ion concentration in the secretions. So, on the whole, what is the basic function of the CFTR gene? So, all the exocrine secretions have to be brought about from the exocrine gland into the lumen, right? So, this is brought about by the CFTR gene. It upregulates this ion channel in the apical surface and it increases the ion concentrations within the secretions so that the secretions become more lucid. So, this is the main function of the CFTR gene. It helps in ensuring that the secretions of the exocrine glands are lucid okay they are they have to be smooth they have to be viscous they do not have to be very thick right so this ensures that the smooth secretion of the exocrine glands is happening okay fine so this is the main function of the cftr gene so when this is affected all the secretions of the exocrine gland are going to be affected okay so this is what happens in your cystic fibrosis fine so, let us understand the pathogenesis. So, CFTR is basically responsible for the epithelial anion channel. Okay, it helps in the transfer of chloride and bicarbonate across the plasma membrane of the epithelial tissues. So, the major function is the formation of the periciliary fluid allowing the normal serially extension and mucociliary transport. So, not only does it help in ensuring that the fluids are maintained in the state that has to be ensured the smooth functioning of the fluid secretion from the exocrine cells but within the cells of the lung within the bronchioles what happens so it helps in the formation of what we call as the periciliary fluid so we know that the bronchi have a ciliated columnar epithelium right so this is your ciliated columnar epithelium and you have a fluid which is called as the periciliary fluid so, the major function of the periciliary fluid is that it helps in the upward movement of the cilia. The major function of the cilia is that it helps in removing the secretions which are there in the airway, right? So, the cilia are basically help in the movement of secretions and removal of secretions from the airway. So, they prevent the excessive accumulation of secretions and the periciliary fluid basically helps exactly in that, right? So, what does the CFTR do? CFTR is involved in the formation of the periciliary fluid layer, allowing the normal ciliary extension and helps in the mucociliary transport, helps in the mucociliary clearance. So, whenever there is damage to the CFTR gene, this periciliary fluid is absent. So, the ciliary function is disturbed and the secretions get accumulated within the airways, causing lung damage. Okay. So, this is about how your cystic fibrosis happens. This is the pathogenesis. So, what have we learned till now? Cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive disorder which affects all the exocrine glands. So, the exocrine glands for example include the pancreas, 
and it also involves the lung secretions okay apart from ensuring that the anion channel is functioning and the smooth secretion of the exocrine glands happens it also helps in the formation of the periciliary fluid and maintenance of the ciliated columnar epithelium which help in removal of the excessive secretions till here we are clear now let us understand the molecular genetics behind cftr mutations now why is this molecular genetics important so these therapies basically go and target the molecules or the exact genetic mutations that are happening and help in improving the symptoms of cf so that is the reason why we should understand the molecular genetics okay so cftr mutations can be divided into six classes the most common mutation is what we call as the class 2 mutations most common is your class 2 mutations okay so let us look at what happens in each of these classes so class 1 is there is complete absence of synthesis of your cftr okay so there is complete absence of synthesis of cftr and the cftr products so can you see here this is a simplified version so this is the apical surface this is the basal surface within the nucleus the dna undergoes translation and you get your cftr gene which is formed so class 1 mutations there is complete absence of synthesis of cftr from the nucleus itself okay then class 2 which is the most common type of mutation there is a defective protein maturation and premature degradation so can you see here so the cftr which is produced in its nascent stage has to undergo processing so this processing is brought about by protein maturation via the endoplasmic reticulum and then it is released to get further processed into the golgi apparatus so what happens here is that there is a defective protein maturation and premature degradation in your class 2 mutations okay so the gene that you have to remember the actual genetic effect is that there is a deletion in the f phi not 8 so f phi not 8 deletions is the most common type okay f phi not 8 deletions is the most common type which is a class 2 genetic defect then class 3 there is disordered gating there is disordered gating that means that there is a diminished atp binding and hydrolysis what does that mean so once the cftr products are released from the golgi apparatus once the cftr products are released from the golgi apparatus they go and get attached to the apical surface right so they are nothing but the anion channels which go and get attached to the apical surface that we have just now learned so then what happens is there are atp molecules which basically go and bind to this cftr and get hydrolyzed to form adp and meanwhile the chloride ion transport happens okay so in your class 3 this is what is affected there is a disordered gating and there is a diminished atp binding or hydrolysis the actual genetic defect is a g551d mutation so the two mutation names that you have to remember is the f508 deletion and the g551d mutation okay so this is your class 3 defect in class 4 there is a reduced conductance through an ion channel okay so in class 4 there is a reduced conductance the ion channel is present but it is not functioning properly in class 5 there is a promoter or a splicing defect and in class 6 there is accelerated turnover in class 6 you can see that there is an accelerated turnover from the apical membrane all the ion channels are removed fast okay so this is about the different classes of your cftr mutations remember the most common is class 2 and remember f508 deletion is class 2 and g551d is class 3 and the reason why you should be knowing this is because we have targeted therapies which go and target each of these mutations all right so if you remember it with the help of this diagram it becomes much more simple so this is about the molecular genetics of cystic fibrosis now let us look at the clinical features one by one so what are the clinical features so first and the most important clinical feature that you have to focus on is the involvement of the respiratory system right in the respiratory system we know that the cftr gene is involved in the formation of the periciliary fluid and it enhances the action of the ciliated columnar epithelium in removing the excessive secretions so if this is not happening what happens there is production of thick copious secretions okay and they are also not removed from the airways and hence 
there is obstruction of the airways right so if the ciliated columnar epithelium is not working in this way there is accumulation of fluid within the airways which are often thick secretions copious secretions so thick se copious secretions which go and obstruct the airway so cystic fibrosis is basically an obstructive lung disease okay so cystic fibrosis is an obstructive lung disease right now if there are thick secretions which are present within the airways how is it going to get complicated it is going to get complicated by infections right so cystic fibrosis patients are more prone to infections they are more prone to infections by bacteria predominantly your pseudomonas predominantly your pseudomonas then you can also have rarer forms like burkholderia species okay so the accumulation of thick tenacious secretions leads to obstructive airway disease and it also results in recurrent lower respiratory tract infections now in the pancreas i told you that it is an exocrinopathy so the other exocrine gland that is involved is the pancreas what is the exocrine function of the pancreas the exocrine function of the pancreas is that it helps in lipolysis right so it helps in lipolysis so it produces hormones which help in the digestion of fats as well as carbohydrates so if there is a damage to the exocrine pancreatic gland you will have malabsorption you will have malabsorption which is characterized by steatorrhea what is steatorrhea steatorrhea is passage of high quantities of fat in the stool so you will have stools which are foul smelling stools which are difficult to flush okay so you will have steatorrhea apart from that you can have other signs of malabsorption such as hypoalbuminemia and fat soluble vitamin deficiencies okay clear so this is about your pancreatic manifestations of cystic fibrosis in 15% of the individuals you can also have cirrhosis in 10 to 20% of the individuals you can have meconium ileus okay and the other place where the ciliated columnar epithelium plays an important role is in your testis and epididymis especially so 99% of the men are infertile because of involution of the vast difference leading to azoospor okay respiratory system involvement pancreatic involvement and infertility always remember these three cardinal clinical features of cystic fibrosis okay so respiratory system involvement pancreatic involvement and infertility are the cardinal features of cystic fibrosis all right clear how do you understand the diagnosis so how do you understand the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis so let us come to the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis so the first and the most important diagnostic point is that there will be increased sweat chloride levels okay so the chloride levels in the sweat will be increased then ion transport across the nasal airways okay so amongst the few specific tests is your nasal airway potential difference so ion transport across the nasal airways can be measured using your nasal airway potential difference and this helps in the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis and the confirmatory test for the diagnosis of cystic fibrosis is your genetic testing so you can have an f508 deletion or a g551b mutation then you definitely know what type of defect that the patient is having okay fine so let us move on to the treatment treatment of cystic fibrosis involves two groups of drugs so we have cftr potentiators and cftr correctors okay we have two groups of drugs or two classes that we say cftr potentiators and cftr correctors so what is the meaning of this cftr potentiation and cftr correction okay so potentiators of cftr gating right so we know that g551d mutation is a class 3 mutation where there is a problem with the atp hydrolysis and the conductance or the gating right so if the gating is affected then this is a class 3 mutation and we can use potentiators which improve the gating okay we can use drugs which improve the gating and thereby potentiate the action of cftr and that drug is your evacaftor that drug is your evacaftor then we have correctors correctors are drug which basically act on your 
class 2 defects where they can correct the F508 deletion. Examples include Lumi Kaftor, Lumi Kaftor, Teza Kaftor. Okay, so we have Eva Kaftor, which is a potentiator, Lumi Kaftor, Teza Kaftor, which are correctors. Right, and the latest treatment option that we have is a triple therapy, which can be remembered with the help of the mnemonic TIE, which stands for Teza Kaftor, Eva Kaftor. And Alexa Kaftor. Okay, so we have TIE, Teza Kaftor, Eva Kaftor, and Alexa Kaftor, which is your triple combination therapy for cystic fibrosis. Alright, clear? Now, apart from these targeted therapies, we should always remember that management of a cystic fibrosis patient should also involve a lot of other steps. So, Always remember to maintain the airway hygiene because these are patients who have an obstructive lung disease and also they have a lot of accumulation of secretions and hence we should take every effort to ensure that these secretions don't get accumulated, right? So you give them nebulizations, you give them nebulizations, right? You give them nebulizations with bronchodilators, you give them nebulizations with bronchodilators to improve the obstruction and also help in clearing the passage, okay, and also helps in clearing the airway passages, right. Apart from that, you can also give 3% NACL or hypertonic saline nebulizations. So, these also help in improving the clearance, okay. Then, you can give anti dornase anti dornase which is basically helping in thinning out the secretions. So, anti dornase can also be given. Right? So, it is not only the lung which is involved in cystic fibrosis to address the malabsorption as well. So, you may have to give enzyme replacement therapy. Which enzymes? It is the pancreatic enzymes. So, pancreatic enzyme replacement therapy. Also, apart from this, you ensure that you give them adequate vitamins and address your vitamin deficiencies as well. Okay? Fine? Then, how do you treat an exacerbation? So, most often the organisms which are involved in an exacerbation of cystic fibrosis includes your gram negatives like Pseudomonas or even Burkholderia. Right? So, how do you treat it? You treat them using beta-lactam antibiotics. You treat them using beta-lactam antibiotics. And of course, in an acute exacerbation, again you will have to use bronchodilators and relieve the obstruction. Okay. Finally, in patients with cystic fibrosis, if this multidisciplinary approach is not much of use and the FEV1 has dropped to less than 30%, if the FEV1 has dropped to less than 30%, you may have to go ahead and do a lung transplant. Okay. Clear? So, this is about the management of cystic fibrosis. Right. So, with this, we have understood what is cystic fibrosis. Okay. So, just to recap, cystic fibrosis is an autosomal recessive exocrinopathy. Cystic fibrosis basically affects the exocrine glands. The mutation is a CFTR mutation. Okay. So, this damaged the CFTR or protein results in accumulation of thick secretions within the lungs predominantly. Apart from that, you can have pancreatic involvement, you can have infertility. Okay. So, this results in an obstructive airway disease and recurrent episodes of infections. So, treatment of cystic fibrosis will involve targeted therapies using potentiators or correctors and you should also take care of the obstructions. You give them broad spectrum antibiotics during an exacerbation, ensure that they are well vaccinated and the final management would be with a lung transplant. Alright, so this is about cystic fibrosis. Thank you.